Welcome to Somatics Sunday. My name is Alyssa Mayer, and here we are with another short and sweet lesson on somatics for riders. This lesson is not just for horse riders, it's for anyone who rides anything, rides a bicycle, a motorcycle, a chair, at a desk, and is a desk jockey. Um, obviously, if you ride horses, um, this would be applicable for you as well. Today we're going to do um, a couple of movements to help you release tension that you are very likely carrying around in your calf muscles, the calf area in the human body because of the way we are uh, bipedal and walk around with all of our weight on just our two feet. Those calf muscles tend to be worked very hard and often overworked and they can be sore and fatigued and tired even if you aren't aware of it. Um, in addition to that, it's an area that we need to have a lot of um, suppleness and flexibility if we're going to be able to let our heels down when we're riding horses, which is important for having a safe and correct position in the saddle and in the stirrups. Um, and if you're riding a bicycle and cycling, as we move through that motion, the ankle needs to have a lot of flexibility um, and it can be restricted by having tension in the calf muscles. So that's what we'll be doing today. We are going to begin with uh, one leg, doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to use my left leg to begin with. So you can do this. Uh, seated in kind of any kind of chair or even a stool you want to have about a 90 degree angle uh, at the knee and you don't want to be slumped or slouched too far back in your seat but actually you can do it while you're leaning back uh, against the backrest that's totally fine and in fact it helps you relax some of your upper body muscles and even rest your arms on the armrests if you have them uh, because the fewer muscles you're uh, using or working with when we do somatic movement, the more clear and clean and precise feedback you create and send through your nervous system up to your brain. So that's a good thing if we're trying to use that feedback to help the brain self-correct something like a tension pattern that is no longer useful, which is what we'll be doing today. So beginning with one leg, you're going to do a simple movement, moving slowly and gently, staying within your current comfortable range of motion. We want to avoid stretch. We want to avoid pain. So if you have some pre-existing tension in your legs, your knees, your calf, your ankle, um, keep that in mind as you do this. You can do these movements really, really small and still get the effect of the neuromuscular resetting and letting go of some of that chronic tension that you might be unconsciously holding in the muscles that we're using to do the move. It's really important that you do move, however. If you just focus on the muscle or try and tighten it um, without also doing a movement with your leg, then we won't be getting the same effect. Uh, we want you to stay as comfortable as possible given your current situation. You know your body. I'm just here to guide you. The technique here is actually less important than you staying comfortable and moving within your comfortable range, whatever that is today for you. All right, so the first move we'll do with one leg only is you're going to pick up your heel, leaving the ball of your foot and your toes on the floor. That contracts your calf muscles. We're working with the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles. And then you're going to slowly, mindfully, deliberately, trying to stay in control, let that heel creep back down until you can rest it on the floor and kind of let go of any tension you may have picked up in that leg. We'll do that a few more times. So picking up the left heel, leaving the ball of the foot on the floor. You don't really want to push too hard off of the floor. That would be working too hard. And in somatics, if you've done this with me before, you know that you're supposed to move slowly, gently, lazy. So now we're slowly bringing our heel back down toward the floor as slow as we can within reason until we can let that heel rest on the floor and kind of give that leg back to gravity so that we're not still holding some residual tension in it uh, because your brain knows we're going to do more because I told you we're going to do more and um, it will try to be prepared for that. So we have to constantly check ourselves and be like, okay, I'm relaxed, but am I really relaxed? Let's let that go as much as possible. We'll do the same thing again, same leg, pick up the heel, leaving the ball and the toes from that same foot touching the floor, and then no need to hold it, just slowly let it creep back down. 
you might see in the video or feel in your own body that it's not going down smoothly. There's a ratcheting effect, a starting and stopping that we'll often feel during the slow release. There, my heel is finally down. I'm going to relax it into the floor. That ratcheting during the slow release is actually great feedback. It's information that your brain can use to make it go smoother and uh, uh, better next time, more efficiently. We'll do one more with that same leg, lifting the heel. The ball of the foot remains on the floor. Slowly let that heel lower down, trying to stay mindfully connected to what it feels like in the leg below the knee, in the calf, maybe even in the shin area on the front of your leg, around in your ankle, maybe in your foot you're feeling some things. Finally, my foot made it back to the floor, so now I'm going to relax here. <sighs> We'll do the same thing with the other foot now. So I'm going to go to my right leg. You go with whichever one you haven't done yet. We'll pick up the heel, leaving the ball and the toes on the floor. Wow, I can really feel the tension in the back of my uh, leg right here when I do that. And slowly keeping my awareness on what that tension feels like, I'm going to let my heel creep back down to the floor until I can rest it and relax it. Let all the tension melt out of my body. Repeat that a few more times with me. Pick up the heel, leaving the ball and the toes on the floor, not too far. If you push too high and feel the end of your range of motion, let's start going back down now while I talk. Um, once you feel the edge of your range of motion, you've effectively already stretched your tissues a little bit. So the next time you would want to do it slower and avoid that stretch feeling. Just because, okay, now I'm down. Relax into the floor. We want to avoid that stretch just because it triggers a reflex that actually gets in the way of this recalibration process that we're after when we're doing Hanna somatics. So that's why we try to keep each movement small enough that we don't feel into the edges of our range and feel that stretchy sensation that we've all been taught to go for when we're doing stretches. So this is like the opposite of stretching. Same leg again, pick up the heel, pressing the ball gently into the floor. The toes are just resting on the floor. No need to hold it up there. You just start coming back down slowly, gradually with a lot of awareness until you can rest that heel on the floor and then rest the whole leg kind of in gravity on your chair on the floor so you're not still holding that residual readiness, which is tension that you don't want to be in the habit of holding. I'm pretty sure we did four with that first leg, so let's do one more on this one. Lift the heel, small, gentle, comfy, slowly, gradually, deliberately staying mentally connected to what it feels like as I bring it back down to rest it on the floor. Okay, next move. You're going to leave that leg alone, back to the left leg or your original leg. Pick your foot up and just scooch it out in front and rest your heel on the floor so that you have um, a little bit of a space underneath the bottom of your foot in front of your heel. And this move is you're going to bring your foot closer to the floor. So you're going to kind of reach, I have to kind of scooch, scooch my leg forward on the chair to be able to do that. Reach the ball of your foot down toward the floor. So you're actually lengthening the front part of your ankle to do that. So your foot doesn't have to touch the floor. You're just sort of extending toward the floor, opening the front of that ankle, and then slowly let your foot come back away from the floor. You're not I'm going to demonstrate what you're not going to do. You're not going to pull your toes up past neutral toward your knee. That's a whole other muscle that we would be recruiting. So we're going to save that for later. Um, you're just going from neutral, which is where you are when you just kick your foot out and rest it on your heel, to contracting your calf muscles to bring you the ball of your foot closer. And you might have to slide your thigh forward to allow your leg to reach. And then slowly decontracting the calf muscles, which just lets that foot drift back to a neutral ankle position. Let's do that one more time. Extend the ball of the foot toward the floor. Slowly release that extension, gradually coming back to neutral, being careful that you don't pull your foot up back to neutral because that'd be using the muscles on the front of your shin to do the work and we want to be focusing on the muscles on the back so that they can unwork, so they can work less in between doing actual work like when you're walking around or riding. One more time with that one, we'll just go with four today extending the ball of the foot toward the floor and slowly picking it up again till it's back in neutral. Okay, switching the feet.
Same thing with the other one. Get yourself in a comfy position where your heel is a little bit out in front, resting, and there's a gap underneath the bottom of your foot. That's your beginning neutral. And now we'll extend at the ankle, bringing the ball of the foot and the toes toward the floor, and then slowly release that extension, gradually coming back to a neutral leg and ankle position. Feel free to adjust to make yourself most comfortable and make this as easy as possible for you. Again, we'll extend the ankle, bringing the toes closer to the floor, and then slowly release that extension, mindfully, deliberately bringing ourselves back to a neutral ankle position. A couple more like that. Extend the ball of your foot toward the floor, no holding, and slowly bring it back to neutral. Okay. Original foot again, same position. We're now going to do something with the opposing muscle group. So we're gonna now work with the muscle on the front of the lower leg. And we have to do this very slowly and carefully because if we were to just mindlessly pull our toes up toward our knee, that's the move, what you do is you mechanically stretch those calf muscles that we're trying to get to passively lengthen in a functional way, which they don't do when you put mechanical stretch pressure on them. Um, so we're gonna mindfully do the move that I just demonstrated for you, where you bring your toes up toward the front of your knee, but not fast and not so far that you start to feel stretch on the back of your leg, okay? Um, if you feel that stretch, Okay, now you know how far you go before you hit the end of your range. So the next time you do it, you can do it smaller and hopefully not feel that stretch. All right, so if I talk less, we'll do this in real time together. So now gently bring your toes up toward the front of your knee, not too far, and then slowly, mindfully, gradually, deliberately bring that foot back down until you're resting in a neutral ankle position. Again, bring those toes up away from the floor toward your knee or even toward your nose, you could think of it. Not stretching that calf, which is so tempting to do. And then slowly, gradually, mindfully, bring your foot back down to a neutral ankle. And when I say mindfully, I mean pay attention to what it feels like to do it and just pay attention to what you're doing. Don't get distracted by like the squirrel out the window or the pretty view or whatever you hear over there or what you're gonna eat. Um, and that's also why we only do a few repetitions is because it's inevitable we'll get distracted if we do too many. And then we're just going through the motions and doing body movements. We're not then doing somatic movement. I switched legs, let's do the other one. So find your neutral, get comfy. Think about what you're gonna do first and remember you're gonna do it small enough to not stretch the calf muscles. Here we go. Draw those toes slowly toward the knee. I feel the stretch so I know I'm at the end of my range and then slowly let those toes come back down toward the floor. They don't go all the way to the floor though, we just go to a neutral ankle position. Let's do that again. I'm gonna do it smaller this time, even slower, bringing my toes up toward the front of my knee and then slowly allowing the ankle to open back to a neutral position as my toes come down away from the knee. One or two more there, pick the toes up toward the knee Slowly let it, them creep back down, which invites those muscles to lengthen back to neutral. You could finish with that one, or if you're still going, complete the one that you're on. Then you can bring your foot back underneath you. Take a nice in and out breath. And that's all we're gonna do for our calf muscles today. I think this is a great series of three movements that as riders or um, athletes, dancers, or just humans who like to have functional lower legs and ankles in the everyday activities that we do, this would be a great series of exercises to do daily or once in a while or any time that you feel tight. If you are an equestrian and you are thinking about ways that you can get your legs longer and more supple, this is an excellent little prep to do before you get to the barn or before you get on your horse, um, before you groom and tack up after, that doesn't really matter. Um, but before you get in the saddle, you might do this as a warm up for your lower legs so that when you do climb aboard your horse and settle your feet into your stirrups and find your nice comfy balanced rider position, um, your calf muscles are then prepared to allow your ankles to drop down and rest in that ideal position 
that gives you the longest leg and the most effective position to communicate with your horse. If you enjoyed this lesson, below this video or somewhere, depending on what device you're watching on, there should be a subscribe button uh, so that you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and catch these free lessons that I'm putting out every Sunday. And if you're really interested in releasing more tension in your legs and uh, easing potentially pain that you may have in your knee and hip area, I've got a great lesson that I put together for you guys in my seven day body mind hack course that is available to you. Um, there's a link in the description below this video if you wanted to sign up for that and the videos are also on my channel. If you actually go to the trouble of signing up for it, you get the, the video lessons, seven days of video lessons delivered straight to your email inbox along with uh, an email with additional um, information and inspiration and motivation and things that I thought you guys would appreciate. Thank you so much for watching and being with me here on Somatics Sunday in my lovely little studio. It's a gorgeous day outside. I'm going to get back outside this little building and play with one of my horses. I suggest that you do the same. Thank you.